Welcome friends. In this lecture, we will discuss about the folding and unfolding of proteins. So what is protein folding? Protein folding is a physical process in which protein chains acquire its native three-dimensional st structure from a random coil. This three-dimensional structure is the functional form of protein and 3D structure or three-dimensional structure is the tertiary structure which is formed from various interactions such as hydrogen bonding, ionic bonding, and van der Waal forces, etc. Each protein exists as unfolded polypeptide when translated from mRNA to a linear chain of amino acids as it lacks stable three-dimensional structure. So when the protein is formed from messenger RNA, it is <coughs> unfolded in nature and it lacks its stable three-dimensional structure. And as the polypeptide chain is synthesized by the ribosomes from mRNA, the linear chain begins to fold and this folded protein is known as the native state of the protein. Protein folding is a vital for the function of proteins and failure to fold properly yield inactive or toxic proteins that malfunctions and cause a number of diseases. So protein folding is very important for the proper functioning of the proteins. In this figure you can see protein is given before folding. This is the random coil before folding and after folding. This is the three-dimensional structure of protein after folding. Next is protein folding is influenced by several external factors, including temperature, pH, and chemicals. Extreme temperature effect, temperatures affect the stability of proteins and cause proteins to unfold or denature. During denaturation, proteins lose their tertiary and secondary structure and becomes a random coil and unfolded. Denaturation is not always reversible, but some proteins can refold under certain conditions. Some cells contain heat shock proteins, which is also known as chaperones, that protects proteins in the cell against heat shock denaturation. So chaperones are those proteins which protects proteins from heat and denaturation. Chaperones help proteins to fold and remain folded under extreme temperature and also assist misfolded protein in unfolding and refolding correctly. So chaperones also help proteins to fold correctly under extreme temperature and chaperones also assist the misfolded proteins to become unfold and then properly refold. Wide variation in amino acid sequences accounts for different conformations in protein structures. So the variation of amino acid sequences results in different conformation in protein structures. The folding, folding of a protein is a complex process and it involves four stages. The first stage of protein folding is the primary structure. It is the first and most fundamental level of a protein structure. And it simply includes the sequences of amino acid residue joined by a peptide bond. So the primary structure is the sequences of amino acid. You can see here in this picture figures, five amino acids are given, valine, esprogene, alanine, arginine, and glycine. So this is valine, this is esprogene, this is alanine, this is arginine, and last one is glycine. So this is simply the sequences of amino acid residue. Next important category is the secondary structure. This structure describes the local folding pattern of the polypeptide backbone. So the local folding of the polypeptide backbone results in the secondary structure of a polypeptide 
it is stabilized by hydrogen's bond between NH and CO group. The two most common types are the alpha helix and beta sheets. So the first one is the alpha helix, the hydrogen atom of one peptide linkage can form a hydrogen bond with the nitrogen or oxygen atom on another peptide linkage results to form alpha helix and it, it is in coil form. Example is carotene that makes up human hair. Carotene proteins have alpha helix structure. So <clears throat> we discussed that this is the simple view. You can see here this the coil structure results from the hydrogen bonding between the NH and the CO NH group group you can see here these are the hydrogen bonding between NH and O you can see here this is NH and C double O these dotted line these are hydrogen bonds so this due to hydrogen bonds this alpha helix structure is formed which is in the form of a coil you can see this is the detailed version of the alpha helix this red dotted line is the hydrogen bonding this is the peptide group so you can see here this is the NH and this is the hydrogen bond between C double O. So this alpha helix results from the hydrogen bonding between the hydrogen atom of one peptide and the nitrogen or oxygen atom of another peptide which it results in a coil structure or a helical structure of proteins. The next type of secondary structure is the beta sheet in the polypeptide chain. The beta sheet in the polypeptide chain fold back on itself so that polypeptide strands are like side by side and are held together by hydrogen bonds forming a very rigid structure. So these are the beta sheet. This is sheet one, this is sheet two, sheet three, sheet four. So these fold back on itself. You can see here and this is also, this also occur due to the hydrogen bond. This red one dotted line is hydrogen bonding and these are the sheets. One, two, three, four sheets. So you can see here hydrogen bonds between NH and C O. So these hydrogen bonds results in the beta structure which is the a form of a secondary structure. So this is the beta sheets. And the example of the beta sheet protein is the silk fibroin, which is present in silk forming beta silk forming beta sheet structure. Next one is the tertiary structure. This level of structure describe how regions of secondary structure fold together and form a three-dimensional structure of a protein. It results from the interaction between side chains or between side chains and polypeptide backbone. Each protein has a particular complex belt pattern of folding. So each have different pattern of folding each proteins. And the interaction occurs with, due to ionic bond between side chain hydrogen bonds, bond or wall forces, and disulf sulfide bond formed between the cysteine residues. So these interaction are responsible for the ter tertiary structure of protein. So this is the sample view you can see here, three dimensional folding of protein due to interaction. So this protein, this is the beta sheet and this is the alpha helix. So this is the Three the three D the tertiary structure is the is formed due to the beta sheet and alpha helix interaction. So this is the detail structure of tertiary structure. This is the beta sheet, and this one is the alpha helix. So you can see the interaction. This is the hydrogen bonding. So the you can see here. This is the polypeptide chain is whole and you can see the interaction. This is the hydrogen bonding between peptide groups. You can see here this is, these are the hydrogen bonding. 
This one is the hydrophobic interaction between nonpolar side chains. You can see here. This is another hydrophobic interaction. This is the ionic bond, the salt bridge. This is also the hydrogen bonding between side chains. This is the hydrogen bonding between the side chains and the peptide group. This is the disulfide bridge between the cysteine residue. So these are different types of interaction which occurs in beta sheets and alpha helix and it results into a tertiary structure of the protein. So this is the 3D structure of a protein which occur due to the folding and refolding of beta sheet and alpha helix due to various types of interactions. The next one is quaternary structure. Some proteins are made up of multiple polypeptide chains, also known as subunits. Quaternary structure refers to the number and arrangement of the individual polypeptide chains. So when more than one polypeptide chain occur, it forms a quaternary structure. For example, hemoglobin carries oxygen in the blood and is made up of four subunit to each of alpha and beta. So you can see here, this is a simple structure. This is the one polypeptide. This is another polypeptide. So it is a quaternary structure. This is the hemoglobin structure. You can see this is one alpha chain. This is another alpha chain. And these two are the beta chains. So these are different types of subunits in a polypeptides. And this interaction of these subunits form the quaternary structure of a protein. So diseases due to the incorrect protein folding, if the protein misfolded and, mis and then the misfolded proteins denature easily and lose their structure and function. So when the protein is not correctly folded, so it denature quite easily and lose their function and structure. Incorrect food proteins folding can lead to many human diseases such as Alzheimer, Huntington, and Parkinson diseases. These are the example of these three are the example of neurodegenerative diseases associated with protein misfolding. So it in these these diseases, the central the nervous system is affected. The next one is the cyst cystic fibrosis also cf it is a fatal disease caused by misfolding of cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator proteins so this in this disease the lungs and digestive system is affected so it is also occur due to the protein misfolding protein misfolding also result in several types of allergy in which the protein is folded incorrectly. So these are, this is all about the protein folding and unfolding. Thank you for watching.